So good afternoon, everyone. Hope everybody is having a nice day today. And we bring to you today the tail ender for uh, Vogue Fashion Symposium, trying to comprehend all walks of fashion industry. Uh, it wouldn't be fair if we leave accessories behind. And among this vast topic, jewelry is uh, cherry on the top on an overall uh, outfit. So it has been an integral part of human culture since forever. And for women especially, without jewelry, there's something major missing. So to talk about this in detail, we have our eminent speaker for today, Mr. Anish H. Kumar. I welcome Anish. And uh, just to let you know a bit about him, uh, with an extensive experience of 15 years in the uh, gems and jewelry industry at various creative positions across reputed brands, uh, currently he is working as head new product introduction, Anish studied and Titan Mia uh, since last seven years. And uh, he is a graduate diploma in fine arts as well as jewelry design and manufacturing techniques. He's also certified uh, lean six, uh, in Lean Six Sigma and also uh, innovator by Innovation School of Management. Uh, he has won many honors and awards from Tata and uh, he's also a gold medalist in painting. So uh, without much ado, I think I should pass the screen to Anish and Anish, you can start. And all the attendees can uh, type in your questions and question answer box and we take them at the end of the session. So over to you, Anish. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Shweta. And I welcome everyone. Uh, th thanks again, everyone, for joining us for today's webinar. And as Shweta already told, I will reiterate my name so that it's very clear to every one of you. Myself, Anish, and I head the new product introduction for the national jeweler brand Tanishq and Mia by Tanishq at Titan Company Limited. Um, most of you might be knowing about Titan because it's a giant in this industry, but I'll give you a one line background. So Titan uh, Jewelry, uh, brand name is Tanishq and Mia by Tanishq, these two brands. Altogether, both the brands are a trendsetter and a leading jewelry brand in India, often known as a national jeweler, with over 300 plus showrooms across three, 300 cities. So today I'm presenting to a few jewelry design and development through the industry's lens, because many of you must be curious that when we design in college, what happens to the industry? When we go in industry, things slightly, sometimes it changes perspective. So I, I will be throwing a light in the industrial background uh, in the context of jewelry design and development. And uh, as Shweta already told, if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the question box in your Zoom browser, and I'll take them up uh, during the end of the presentation. Uh, and we have reserved enough time, 15 to 20 minutes for that. So uh, I will try to address the maximum, whatever is possible. So let's uh, get started now. Yeah. So this is a disclaimer page. Uh, just go back. So I would like all of you to read first because uh, being in a design and creative field, a disclaimer is very important for all of us so that we know what we are uh, going to consume next. Yes. So these are my uh, table of contents today. So I'll be uh, covering jewelry design and its detail for manufacturing and uh, product design and development process, challenges for designers, probable solutions, youth, ob obviously it's you and the future. And last not least, the most important question and answer now. Yeah. So jewelry design and its detail required for manufacturing. I'll start my slide by the first step in designing and uh, with uh, due credit to Thomas, who is a UK based jeweler and he is an award winner uh, UK based jeweler who is having his showroom at uh, La Machine Cotillo. So uh, he says, when I design, I'm focused on both details and the shape of the jewel. If the details are not perfect, the rest of the design can also be compromised. And I completely side by him. So uh, going to the next slide. Back one slide. Yes. So uh, all of you will notice one thing uh, very prominent in uh, my presentation. Being from the design and the artistic background, you will find the entire presentation through uh, demonstrated through images and uh, images, videos, pictures. And uh, the whole purpose of this is most of you are from the creative field. 
and our designers. And we often get bored as a designer, I'm sharing my experience. I often get bored when I see too much write up. So same thing. So I don't want to bore any one of you and uh, let's uh, keep the momentum intact. So if you see this design, these are some of the sample designs uh, from the industry. So when we, uh, we are at college, we design it very beautifully, but uh, we often try to forget the technical aspects. And uh, my further slides will also be covering mainly on the uh, technical aspect of the jewelry. So if you see in this ring, uh, this ring is uh, drawn in coral. So it might be looking too mechanical to you because it's a jali kind of work, very intricate jali kind of work. We often call it in the industry terms, filigree work as well. And uh, so if you go in detail, every detail is there. It's inner shank ID, outer ID, length, width, height, what is the Y cross section and the four views, orthographic views. So all these are a very essential part of the design if you want to really go it into the market and for the manufacturing purpose. Yeah. This is the second design, which is a rendered version, but yet technical. So if you see with a closer uh, eye, you can see each diamond is visible. And as it goes along the 3D, you can count, you can literally count the number of diamonds. Where is it setting? What kind of setting is it? Whether it is prong setting or pave setting, each and every detail is being given. Also at the below of this, you can see the color stone and the diamond details are written like oval sapphire nine by seven uh, into 4.5 mm. Side stones, taper baguettes. Baguettes we usually call uh, a rectangular, which is not uh, both side equal. So it's a taper kind of baguettes. So four by four into two, 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 uh, two pieces. And uh, the, the last one, you can see 1.5 mm diamonds. So all these technical details are very crucial if you want your design to come to life. Yeah, next. Here also, if you see on the left side of the image, a triangular stone is set and a kind of prong, if you see, it looks like a tiger claw. So we in the industry often call it as a tiger nail or a tiger claw prong. So this is the kind of setting which enhances and accentuates the uh, look and feel of the color stone so that the jewel is visible fully without, uh, uh, with less gold content. And it also gives more luster. The less your color stone will be covered, more brilliance and luster it will give to your jewel. On the right side also, if you see, all the technical drawings are given. So um, the first image is on the top view, then side view, how the, um, how the lock is placed, where is the post position, and then a zoom out image of the post position. Post we call it basically what we wear in the ear. So if you see the, the part which we put inside our ear hole, that is known as the post. On the right side, you can see. So that is a post. So all these details means uh, you will see through the images, but I'll explain it to you orally. I have not mentioned because of uh, space constraint in the image. I want you to look at the image and the details. Yeah. Next, this is also one of the examples of a, a huggy. On the left hand side of the product, if you see, it's a earring sketch, a rough sketch, but still when the rough sketch has a side view, which lets you know that if my top view is this, what kind of side view will it be? And also at the bottom, you will see a pearl dangling. And uh, this kind of uh, particular type of earring is also known as huggies. Why huggies? Because it hugs your ear low. So the moment you will put it in, uh, into your ear, it will hug it. And hence the name suggests huggies. Similarly on the right side also, one more example of that. Yeah. Next. Yes. Now the second, uh, we all have seen the rough sketches, the technical drawings. Now comes all the views with proper rendering, which many of us uh, as creative people, we love rendering the most because it gives life to the product and you can see the product uh, in a much realistic kind of uh, look. That is why some, somewhere in the industry, some people also call it not just rendering, but realistic rendering. So in the realistic rendering also, you can uh, zoom and you can see that each uh, of the diamonds is uh, colored in white and uh, uh, the center uh, yellow citrine is center, uh, yellow in color and the green, all the greens are the green emeralds. 
on the right side similarly if you see yeah right side this is a enamel kind of product so it's a it's a finger ring and it's a we often call it as a stackable finger ring because if you see on the top we can see a combined together three rings together while on the left side you will see three different uh, uh, pieces so all these three are stacked together and we are, we give a choice to the consumer whether they can they want to wear it as one piece or can individually as well so here the black part if you see there we have used enamel to give a more beauty and colorfulness to the product yeah yes this is one of a design which uh, looks more of a dragon kind of thing so inspired from the chinese creatures but uh, it's it's from the open source market which i liked so i thought that uh, because many times we make a, a very uh, geometrical kind of design so this is something which uh, uh, which is more of a um, uh, no, not a geometric but more of a life kind of product where animals so if you see any of the big brands international market many brands use this kind of motifs for example there is a brand by the name of boucheran they use mainly animal motifs like uh, chameleon and then frog and butterflies so similar way this image is similar to that so here the drawing of a side view and front view uh, becomes a bit technical at times but that is where uh, i would advise all the young designers to take help of a clay what uh, when i was in my college days also i remember we used to wherever because everything means nobody is born like if the top view is like this the side view will come like this that is why where we take help of some of the live materials and we play with it so clay uh, usually known as play dough what kids usually use so you can use that and you can uh, roughly make a, a top view by uh, cutting out it and uh, definitely you will get to know the side view and front view naturally so this will support you in drawing your front view and side view in case of animal kind of creature designs yeah this is a typical kind of a ring what we in the industry call it as cocktail ring why cocktail because uh, as the name suggests uh, this is usually a flaunting kind of thing which people uh, especially uh, ladies would like to flaunt at a pastry three parties or as social gatherings and hence its name is cocktail because it's a mass uh, it's a more of a appealing kind of thing which anyone can notice even from a distance if you are wearing a very sleek finger ring people might notice might not but people uh, who uh, usually wear cocktail rings so uh, it is meant to uh, meant to be used as a cocktail parties and the in terms of the design language it is quite voluptuous and big and usually with a big color stone in the center and lots of diamonds and motifs around yeah here on the left side if you see this is a earring it is a very typical for kind of earring for a uh, indian market as well and uh, here if you uh, zoom so if you zoom the uh, left side uh, side of the earring you can see on the top part there are very tiny diamonds so uh, and uh, hardly any metal or any prong is visible so when we do this kind of say, setting it is often known as pave setting because why the name pave because it's like a pavement so the pavement of metal where all the diamonds are set thoroughly with a very minute prong size prong we call uh, both the uh, the sides which holds the diamond together so all those grains we call it as prong so in the terms of pave we call it as pave prong so this this is a typical example of a pave prong uh, where it might look like there are some 10 design uh, 20 diamonds only but if you will see the light piece there are more than 50 60 diamonds and all are through a pavement and uh, the diamond size is as low as point, uh, 0.07 so this is the diamond size and in the center uh, the, the uh, tourmaline stone is there and uh, all these pieces are linked together so it is a very a perfect example of a dangler why we call it dangler because it dangles through so if you see all the hangings there are five lines all these angles are linked together individually with a individual collet and 
the moment you someone will wear on to the neck every each of the piece will flow freely which uh, in my uh, middle of the my slides i'll share one of the videos of one of our collections where you can see um, dipika padukone is wearing the uh, the earring which is a similar kind of thing not this design but uh, the concept like a dangler concept is there which uh, uh, swivels here and there now coming on to the right side if you see this is again uh, inspired from the animal uh, especially from the fish so here also the side view becomes very difficult so i'll again suggest for any kind of animal motif or uh, uh, any kind of deity motifs kind of products you should always uh, try people who are some people are uh, uh, born and gifted like an artist so they can imagine but while for the others who are learning through the college and through experience you should try a, a clay dough Uh, to carve out the front view side view and top view for this kind of particular challenging designs yeah yes uh, this on uh, right side and left side both these designs are rendered designs with technical drawings and 3d view as well so earlier we were talking when we begin the uh, slide there we were talking about design rendering separately and technical drawing separately but here it's a combination the piece is fully top view side view 3d view all views are there as well as all the technical drawings is also there like orthographic projections top from the top it will look like this from front view it will look like this so this is what uh, is expected when you enter into the industry people expect more of a orthographic kind of projection design rather than only the top view uh, and uh, in my subsequent slide i will all also cover why top view only is not enough yes in this design if you see uh, in both the bangles top is a to top view which is properly wrapped a proper shape of a bangle or a kada while in the bottom side you will see it's a spread view because when we make only top view we are not aware what is happening at the background and that is why it's a basic requirement when you you will go to manufacture your piece or when you will go to uh, make your piece in cad you will be required to draw its back side also and this will give you a better understanding of that how how it will wrap around and how the product will look and one example for this i'll also tell uh, if uh, you are making any sort of bangles especially this kind of bangle uh, the best way to make it more feasible and practical uh, for the consumer or for the industry is you draw it on a plain sheet of paper and draw a spread view how is it in the bottom and then cut it with a scissor proper outline just you cut and wrap it around your uh, wrist and then it will give you a holistic view of okay how it is looking whether it is covering my wrist properly or not what is my inner diameter whether the drawing that i have drawn uh, is it technically correct or not so all these questions and answers that are coming to your mind will get automatically cleared yeah next yes here is one of the example of a uh, means how a beautiful rendered technical drawing has translated into a final product on so on my left hand side it's a drawing rendered design you see the the rendering is so good so beautiful that it looks like realistic only it looks as if it's a final product proto and while on the right side if you see exact exactly it replicates the same thing so so this if as a designer if we are able to achieve this kind of accuracy then there is no stopping no one can stop you to lead the industry to be, to become an inspiration in the industry because this is what is expected many times we as designer we design something onto paper but when it goes to realization or commercialization we realize that the product we have made apple but actually it's coming half apple like <laughs> like the logo so but ideally our intention should be what we have drawn the final proto should also come as close possible as to this yeah now i would like to draw some references from the industry from the domestic as well as the ex export market so what's going on so if you see these uh, on the left side this is again a uh, earring and on the right side it's a pendant a small pendant so in the export market they, both these designs are a set which is mainly uh, targeted for the export market when i say export it means uh, majorly india exports for uh, the european uh, countries as well as the us 
and uh, UAE. But this kind of product is basically suited for the uh, European market and the uh, Australian and uh, American market, not for the Dubai market. Dubai market has a, is a similar and a accentuated version of the Indian market. So if you see this kind of design, they are very particular. They want very minimalistic, simplistic design. And also in the US and the UK market and um, the entire Europe, they sell uh, products mainly in the uh, nine carat and 10 carat kind of jewelry, uh, like, uh, unlike India, because India is obsessed with 22 carat and uh, to the lowest 18 carat. But there people want more of diamond, lower quality grade of diamond is good. Um, and in the US and the Europe market, Jewelry is not only seen as a, a investment or as an adornment. Uh, there, it's more of a fashion or style statement. While in India, if you see, people are wearing jewelry also for style, as well as it's an investment for uh, them. Yeah. Another example of the export market. This also, if you see. So um, this too will give you a, a little uh, bit of idea about what, what happens in this export market. Export market have very minimalistic and simple designs with lots of diamonds and some color stones. And their technical drawings are also very simple, top view, side view, front view, that's it. Not like a human uh, face or, or kind of a, a non-geometrical pattern, what we use basically in the India market, like leaves and all. You will very rarely find that kind of designs in the export. US and UK market. Yeah. Next. Yes. So the, the, this is also a typical export market. And if you see this, uh, uh, I have uh, tried to draw uh, three parallels. One is the original sketch and comments you see on the left side, uh, which is slightly rendered. And but this is typically for the export market. Export market, they don't waste too much time in rendering and uh, too much of beautification because they, they deal in numbers. Numbers means 1,000 pieces, 2,000 pieces, 10,000 pieces. So if 10,000 pieces needs to make and uh, every day they, they are churning out 50 designs, 100 designs. So it's, uh, it becomes uh, nearly uh, inhuman to produce that kind of, uh, that quantity of products. So export market is like that. And uh, it's more of a very simplistic and uh, geometric kind of designs. So left side uh, is original sketch and comments. If you see in the comment section, it says all white diamonds. So uh, all, all white diamonds, one piece. So, so center the diamond is uh, white. And on the both sides also diamonds are white. While in the um, center, if you see along the solitaire, this is a pink, pink sapphire. So this is there. In the center, you see the technical sketch. In the technical sketch, top view, front view, and side view is also there. So side view, is very critical because when you uh, many times you will realize that top view what you have drawn same top view can have at least five to six different kinds of side view um, by any designer means uh, you can so th that is why if you want if you are sure that what you want it's always better to draw a front view as well as side views and on the my extreme uh, right hand side specs specs uh, is the short term for specifications so where we give a product code, like in this case, uh, RC something something is there, and it's a ring of uh, one and a half carats. That is the uh, uh, total weight of the diamonds and rounds, prongs, this entire piece is in prong setting. And then the details are there, like 1.2 diamond uh, is 12 numbers, 1.346 number, 1.48 numbers, and so on and so on. So, so these kind of uh, technical details, and this is a typical kind of PDIs. PDIs we call product design information sheet. What in the industry, especially in jewelry export market, we use. So if you see domestic market here, the PDI is slightly longer. And uh, since it's a pendant, so only top view and side view is there. So because in pendant bottom view will not play that much of a role. Um, that is mainly applicable for the finger rings and more of a bangle kind of product. So if you see, it's a clearly the top view is this. In the side view, they have shown a jolly pattern, you know, wire kind of work, which gives volume to the product. And if you come in the below, here also you can see all the diamond sizes, like diamond round uh, zero, double zero zero. That is a sieve size. Sieve we call. Uh, when we put diamond into a, in Hindi, we call it chalni. 
uh, what is used to filter. So, so sieve is nothing, just it's just a filter to filter out the different sizes of the diamonds. So, diamonds in the industry is often used uh, and uh, sold through sieve sizes rather than mm sizes. Because uh, um, imagine in one product you are having some thousand uh, number of diamonds, and if nobody is going to measure each of the thousand pieces with a vernier caliper or of a diamond gauge, that whether it is one mm or one point two mm. So the easy way is you put a sieve, you pull all the diamonds into that basket and whatever will be of 1 mm, automatically it will filter down, it will go in that. Then again, you change the sieve, 1.2 will come into another filter and so and so on. So if you see here, all the diamonds in this single design, there are all together 15 different kind of uh, diamond sizes. And that is what makes a beauty of a design because the more variety of diamond, graduation of diamonds you use in the product, the more realistic and more lively it looks like. And also if you see in this design on the extreme right hand side, there are different kinds of settings like pre-prong, uh, pave setting, cap setting. So if you see the uh, details, it also says that what kind of setting we do. And uh, can, uh, can go back to the image on the top. Yeah, so next. Yes. So if you see the drawing, the first two, two lines, which forms a V is actually a pave. Uh, why uh, we call it pave as I explained earlier, because it looks like a pavement of, there is no, uh, there is no big prongs. The prongs are, the pave prongs are very tiny and uh, it, it takes the shape of a pendant. While in the prong, the, all the big, big chunky pieces of the diamonds you see, all those are set in prongs. Prongs, we call it also a claw, like three kind of uh, different uh, uh, claws are there and one diamond is set onto the socket of it. So this is a combination, typical combination of prong setting, pave setting, and in the drop, it's a drop setting, which is also known as a cap setting. If you see, there's a leaf, leafy kind of pattern on top of the pearl, so where the cap is set. And usually what we do, uh, we put a, a, a bale kind of thing, uh, a wide drawn at the base of the cap and in the pearl we do it a half braid and it is usually uh, uh, soldered it's not, not soldered it's usually glued through a high adhesive uh, use in the industry yeah so far we have talked about um, mainly about the design process and uh, not design process, basically more, more of a design, how the technical drawing should be, how a design should be, and what are the details required in the design, and what are the expectations in order to realize the design into the market and uh, make it manufacturing friendly. Now I'll talk next, uh, next of my slides will cover mainly on the product development, that how we are doing the development, what are the in, uh, intricate processes of the product development. So this is primarily the second step um, in the whole cycle for uh, jewelry mm -hmm. from where it uh, travels to idea to design to next. Yeah. So here one takeaway, especially for me and uh, I'm sure all of you is when we design, we don't design to please ourselves. We design and in the jewelry industry, especially jewelry industry is uh, very much dom dominated by uh, businessmen except a few corporate giants like us uh, and they are people when they hire designers they mean business and they are very crude so they will say that if you are designing your design should bring some money money into the market so that is why my heading is design for business so in the development stage if you see um, I'll cover it in the next slides but uh, overall I'll tell you uh, idea generation where you get an idea and you do the rough concepts then idea screening which your uh, uh, you can also do or when you join an industry, your senior will screen out the ideas, what is best suiting to the market as per the customer need, then the concept development, which we'll cover in the slides. Was that business strategy, strategy development, like whatever concepts you have developed, which market is it going to suit and who is going to be the probable buyer of that. So all those things we do in the business strategy development. And then comes the product development. Uh, where the entire journey of the design to the reality comes into picture. Once the product development is over, after that we do the test marketing. So test, ma test marketing is nothing, but it's a prototype introduced for a research and feedback to a limited group. 
uh, they could be our internal customers they could be a few number of the external customers as well so it's, it's a small sample size which is tested in the market after that once we are confident that we are going in the right direction then uh, comes the commercialization so commercialization means that it's bulk production as well and also final briefing on a strategy for formulation so uh, for the go to market strategy and uh, finally introduction the product is introduced into the market so this is these all are the broad cycle which uh, not only caters or uh, um, is associated only with the jewelry industry but any kind of creative and uh, design and development industry whether it is accessories whether it is fashion whether it is jewelry whether it is furniture so everywhere this is a, a broad picture of a, a design for business concepts of new product development yes so we often call it as a pdd process in short so what is a pdd process the pdd stands for product and design development so pdd is nothing but it's a complete blueprint that takes an idea through various structured phases and that results in a finished product being launched into the marketplace this process is managed and uh, driven by an expert team of product design developers and uh, uh, which keeps a check on every aspect of the project the different phases are controlled by approval gates which ensures that the project has met specific criteria before moving on to the next phase in the process it is also supported at a few stages by cross functional teams of designers quality inspectors and ma manufacturing partners so if you will see the image here what i have put out is product idea so your idea is there then you have to select a partner so partner selection is nothing but uh, many designers like for example if you are an independent designer you don't have a, a you don't want to work for any corporate or any jewelry industry uh, any jewelry company but you want to be an entrepreneur you want to design your own collection so in that case you will have to uh, sort for a partner selection who is ready to manufacture your goods so that is also known as a partner selection big companies also do outsource things that is why the partner selection is a very crucial part of the business and once you have selected a particular partner then that partner manufactures your jewelry and then a prototype approval the prototype comes to you you are approving it you are getting it tested in the market and then you do it a pilot run uh, with a very small limited group of people and once the pilot run is successful then you do, do the production launch and then the production and final launch comes into the picture yes so i'll take you through a small uh, step by step procedure so how the industry uh, perceives this whole process in short so industry process of pdd if you will uh, see we'll start from the left side on the top which is a brainstorming so brainstorming is nothing but a idea creation or what concept uh, means what you are thinking what is basically in your mind what you want to draw so and where are you are drawing the inspiration from so that is uh, all about brainstorming before that we uh, often do market research so market research it's it's, uh, it's already a part of uh, every industry whether it is jewelry or fashion or anything where you refer to the uh, international guidelines and the trends and also through some of the journals Uh, which are published in the public domain so uh, once the that is done after that you do the brainstorming once brainstorming is done then uh, the idea generation where you generate certain kind of ideas where you say that you know, what kind of product you are going to make and uh, who is your consumer and uh, what will be the price band all those things you will think into idea generation and then idea screening once your idea is uh, once your idea is screened that out of uh, 10 or 20 idea five is uh, good to go then you start on focusing on the design creation of those screened ideas after the screened ideas design creation is done then uh, you have to do the design detailing what i have shown uh, you guys in the beginning of my slides where the designs were there and the detailing was there technical drawing was there orthographic projections were there and uh, dimensions were written uh, in core like i want 1 mm diamond the shank should be 12 mm all those details so that is known as de design detailing which is very crucial part of the business uh, that is followed by rendered design with technical drawing rendered why rendered design because when you are presenting it to your internal team then also for example if you are a designer your internal team can be a merchandiser that can be a sales guy in your organization so the sales bar guy will not understand your technical drawing 
he will only understand beautiful designs what looks good to the eye appeal uh, that he will select hence you have to do a very good rendering kind of design and once your selection is done and when you go to the production then that guy will say i don't want your uh, beautiful design all this thing is good but how we are going to manufacture it hence that uh, slide uh, that part is rendered design with technical drawing so both are equally important for you the next step is the design loading for pd pd means product development uh, design loading so once your design is complete onto onto the sheet whether in soft form or hard form then you do the for uh, design loading for product development then the entire product development cycle starts then you do the test market uh, marketing then commercialization and finally it is launched to the market Yes. Now I will take you through some of the images and what softwares we use in the industry and how the entire design development happens in a typical jewelry industry. So design development route. Uh, this is a route where um, the design is created by a bunch of designers, a set of independent designers as well, sometimes a freelancer as well. So and that goes through the entire manufacturing process. So the first stage is. Products are developed uh, through this route has to go through various processes and multiple stakeholders. Why I say multiple stakeholders? Because in any organization, everything can't be done by one person. If you are a designer, you can be a manual designer, you can be a CAD designer, but uh, it's very rare that you can be a multi-talented, you can be a CAD designer, manual designer, coral designer, and then product developer and model maker. So it's, it's uh, nearly impossible, except uh, certain uh, designers who are specialized who do uh, that kind of product and who, uh, who who sell their own brand and that sells by their brand name who are basically craftsmen so i'm talk talking about its general industry perspective so once the design is created after that uh, one of the most creative and crucial stage is cad stage cad when i say it's computer aided designing where the cad designer through the design and sketch that you see on a 2d paper gives life through 3d modeling post several iterations with the help of matrix software uh, why matrix where there are many more softwares like rhinos is there matrix is there ideas is there jewel cad is there so many softwares are there but matrix currently is uh, ruling over the roost because it's uh, industry's most advanced uh, software for the jewelry designing and sculpting at cad stage most of the technical expertise of the cad designer and the project coordinator is put to the real acid test. Why is it, I say acid test? Because, um, because of the below points. If you see, your design has to be aesthetically good looking. It has to match to the PDS, product design information sheet. It has to be technically sound. You might have made a beautiful design, but it's not manufacturable. Um, it's of no use uh, to, to the company. So, and after that bulk feasibility. Bulk feasibility means when you are working, especially in export market or Indian market where they are catering to more than 10 or 20 or 30 showrooms. So bulk needs to be done. So if one piece is selected, you, you are supposed to produce 100 pieces, 500 pieces for that. So sometimes what happens, we are, uh, we work hard and very closely with the Karigar and get one piece done very means well crafted and beautiful designer stuff. But uh, we often miss to know and calculate that uh, how many days it has taken for one design. So if, for example, one of your uh, design is taking some uh, two months time only to develop one piece and its bulk is also going to take uh, two months or one month for each piece, then that's not a viable design. Hence, bulk feasibility test needs to be done. And that is also decided during the CAD stage itself. Then ergonomically sound. Ergonomics is a very important part of jewelry because jewelry is an adornment piece where people don't just see and buy it. It's a more of a feel and touch kind of product, unlike I mean, some of the other uh, fashion stuff. So every jewelry, you will see whether your mom, your sister, or wife, or anyone wearing, you will see them, nobody will go and just buy a, a, a heavy piece of jewelry. They would like to uh, physically put it onto their neck and try it, look into the mirror, have total satisfaction. Uh, she will ask with her colleague or the showroom staff that how am I looking, how is it fitting, and whether I'm able to open it, close it by my, by my own self or not. So that is the ergonomics plays a very important part. Sometimes many jewelry designs, what we make, 
looks good, feels good, but when we uh, put it onto the neck, it has some pokey edges. Pokey edges means there is some design element which, um, which touches the skin and hence it becomes uncomfortable. So that is why ergonomics is also a very important part and where we need to round off the edges. Next point is uh, budget as close to the sketching estimate because when you design, in your design sheet only you give the budget that whether it will be costing 50,000 or 60,000 or 1 lakh or 5 lakh and uh, your product uh, should be as per the components, raw materials and color stones available. Suppose you have uh, made one design which is beautiful looking but you are not able to find the stone what you have drawn it. Then it's of no use. It is not going to see the light of the day. Hence, before designing or might be once your concept is finalized, you should be very clear that what kind of raw materials you are going to use, whether it is um, a, a color stone or a ruby or an emerald or anything else. So it has to be uh, perfectly available into the market. Yeah. And last is customer friendly. Customer should love to buy your product. Yeah. Yes, this is a typical screenshot taken from a CAD software, metric software. So if you'll see, it has all the views and this software is very advanced and very helpful for creating a 3D realistic rendering. Once we, you do the designing, where you do rendering with a sketch pen or with a crayons or pencils or a spatula or different kinds of drawing and painting instruments. But this is through the computer software. So you can see the beautiful design rendered realistic kind of, it is a combination of white gold and yellow gold in the center, you can see the ring. On the right side, the technical views are there. And on the extreme left, all the tools and commands are there. So this is typically how uh, metric software screen, the opening screen looks like. Yeah. This is designed to CAD inst interpretation. So if you see on my left side, it is a 2D PDI sketch. So it's a rendered sketch. So you can call it a design. You can call it as rendered sketch. And on the center and the right side, you can see a realistic rendered final product in CAD of the same, uh, same, same design. So here, if you see from the uh, here, uh, technical drawing is very important because if you see the um, PDIS, only top view is given. Rest is given to interpret that how. So fortunately, in this case, we had a side view and that is why we were able to interpret it. Uh, in a much better way. So if you see, this is a typical pendant, which is in the shape of a tire and twisted tire. So why I call it tire? Because it's cross section is like C, C cross section. So at the back side, it's completely hollow. It's not solid because if you will put solid, it will, the gold will be wasted at the back side and nobody is going to pay what is not visible to them. So hence uh, you can see in the 3D view, how it is looking. So when you put it on the, onto a base, uh, it, it will slightly topple left and right and why it doesn't have any bay. So you can put, uh, you can insert your chain throughout and it will fit at an angle and you can, uh, uh, you can wear it very comfortably. So li life is infused into the product during the CAD creation. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the typical example of a uh, bangle or bracelet where uh, if you see on the right side, assemble 3D pieces there. And on the left side, if you'll see components shown. So if you see, it has three components. One is the center element, which is your base of the bangle. Uh, one on the top is a diamond studded part, which is your design element. And on the bottom also, which is a back jelly, which is also the back jelly here works as, it, this is a perfect example of a design technical and ergonomics piece. Your center part is a technical piece. Or the, the entire piece looks technical, but the center is the base. The top part is the basic design element. The bottom, the bottom part is also uh, complementing the top design element as well as it is required for the ergonomics part of it. Because if you are going to wear this bangle without the bottom part, you are going to hurt it at points. It will poke your, poke your skin. Hence, it is uh, fitted very well and soldered from the base, as you can see in the right, uh, right side piece. And uh, then it uh, makes a perfect example of a perfect piece. So why, why so many components? Because design is very intricate. We need to finish it in three different stages. And the centerpiece is made through CNC, CNC is uh, computer uh, through uh, CNC machine. It's, it's a kind of machine uh, which uh, does the, it is a destructive, or we can say that uh, 
it's a, a subtraction method of making a, a jewelry directly in gold where a gold blank is put into the cnc machine and then uh, it um, uh, removes the metal and this is formed while a cad is more of a additive kind of manufacturing so additive and subtractive kind of manufacturing if this design is a combination of both hence so if you see there, there are different techniques involved multiple finish in the product manufacturing issues are addressed here and part by part assembly so this is a perfect example for technicality for manufacturing friendly ergonomics what everything is thought through in the cad stage itself yeah next uh, yeah, CAD examples of orthographic projection. One more example of where the top view, side view, front view. If you see this, all your drawings are done through CAD image. The same is expected out of the young designers that when you are designing, when you are putting your products into the manufacturing, it should have all the details so that it becomes easy for a CAD designer to do and also the manufacturing and subsequent processes. Yes, CAD and post process illustration through images. So this slide, if you see, this is like a, you can say in terms, this is a Bible for the entire product development through images. If you see the first one is the sketch, which interests most of you. The second is the CAD design where the, the a guy is doing the detailing in the CAD through a touchpad. And the third one is the CAD detailing where the diamonds are placed into the uh, design. Fourth one is the CAD STL image. STL is nothing, but uh, it's, a, it's a format of the file when it goes for printing. Printing means CAM printing, printing, computer-aided manufacturing printing. After the CAD STL image, it's a RPT image. So, so the blue one you see, that is a typical RPT. RPT is nothing but a, a rapid prototyping. It's a resin. It's in the shape of a, and uh, this is a blue colored resin, which uh, uh, gives you, it's, it's nothing, it's a simple technique how you print a paper that is a 2D, similar way you are printing a 3D piece here. Next is the your silver model. So, silver model is nothing once your RPT is done, your RPT is very uh, fragile and uh, it's so soft that if you, if five people touches it, it will break and hence it's not uh, durable. So, it's only for the first uh, shoot. After that, whenever the bulb comes, you have to make a silver model because silver is more sturdy. And through that, you can cut a mold and then you can produce multiple numbers. Even if you want 100 pieces, you can, uh, we, you can take it out from through the silver model and mold. After that, gold ghat. This is an industry term, what we use, and we call it as a ghat. Ghat is nothing, it's a karigar language. Karigar logi language use karte hain. So gold ka without setting is known as a ghat. So where the entire uh, silver model and the design, what you have thought, what you have made in CAD, it goes through and it's, uh, it's uh, almost in ready to use condition only diamond is not set. So before diamond setting or stone setting, that stage is known as a gold guard stage. And on the last one, if you see, this is a final proto. So final proto means final piece. So what the designer has designed and the live piece is look, uh, looks like that where this is a typical example of a micro pave product. So if you see inside all are the small uh, pink tourmaline uh, uh, color stones and the outer petal it has a diamond. So it is giving a very realistic uh, look of a live flower petal. Yes, so you all have already seen the entire process here all of so now I'll take you through a few of the images of the successfully launched collections at Tanishq. So these are a few of our best sellers. And so Nilofer on the left side, if you see, this is a typical example of a very micro power where pink sapphires and diamonds combinations are there. This is a design. You can go to our website also once you are done and then browse our collections. So on the left side is new offer collection. On the right side, if you see the gorgeous lady uh, Deepika wearing, this is a Ahalya collection, my recent collection, uh, what uh, me and my team has done. So th uh, this one was launched uh, last year. And yeah, next. So th that was about Tanish. Now this is Mia. So if you see Mia on left side, these are Mia products. On the right side, Mia Silver. Last year, we launched the um, Silver Jewelry line as well. 
and uh, the left side is uh, more of a uh, fashion and uh, 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 daily wear, office wear kind of products where designs are very minimalistic and uh, very delicate. And uh, Mia, basically, uh, uh, the gold jewelry products we make in 14 karat because it's for office wear and uh, um, as per our market research and other things, uh, this is a segment which caters to the working women and uh, a teenagers and also college going students and people like you creative people uh, who want very minimal who want to flaunt a design every day because uh, people like uh, us uh, don't want to wear a jewelry a heavy necklace and go to the office nobody likes that so that is why mia was introduced into the market and on the right side the silver line uh, which is uh, again for people uh, people have been asking us that why you are not, not launching silver silver and hence here is the answer we have a very beautiful range of silver jewelry as well yeah next yeah this is one of our, um, our uh, super duper hit collections we have many more collections super duper hits but if i will cover that uh, more than even a few hours will go in showing you the designs you can go and browse on tanish website and um, see it and uh, definitely uh, encourage your uh, wives and your family members to buy it as well and so if you uh, can you click on the youtube link i would like to show this yes sir yes sir video. i can yeah. super duper hit collection queen of hearts so uh, we'll go back to the presentation now so you you might have noticed in this design uh, in the video all the jewelry whatever deepika is wearing it's very flexible it's like a natural wave watery it's beautiful isn't it very nice beautiful <clears throat> Yeah, so 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 it's a it's a free fall kind of so that is what is expected out of a designer because when you design, don't make st stuff uh, very stiff kind of pieces. So it has to you have to add life to it. It has to be flexible, and that is why all the technicalities that we discussed already in the beginning. So you so the more input you give in the beginning, the output will be equally beautiful. Yeah, next. Yes, so this is a very this is one of my favorite images that I pulled out through Google. So I often f uh, feel that I'm in this situation that this fish has been delicious, has been served to me, but it's long. I can't eat. So this is a major challenge for a budding designers because when you step out into the industry, your creative ideas are free flowing everywhere. You want to design this, you want to design that, and then your merchandiser, your uh, senior manager, or the, your your customer, uh, your marketing person will tell you, boss, itna bada design diya hai. But what I want, I want it in 50,000. So all your creative thoughts have gone for a toss. Then you'll be, Are, yaar, ye itna, man, itna grand hai. how it can be done in 50,000? Because it is not possible. So that is why this is one of a bigger challenge, which as a designer, you have to address. You have to design for your customer, not for yourself. Hence, set the benchmark, set, set the parameters in the very beginning that what is the budget, what is the kind of look you want, 
what kind of design you want and whether you want a dangler or stud or huggies so the more questions you ask into the beginning the more fruitful your design and successful your design will be in a later stage yeah yes now um, this is my code this is not uh, anyone else code because i'm um, i started my career as a as an artist and where i pursued my uh, career in uh, uh, for fine arts and then i jumped into jewelry designing so there is a very fine line between an artist and a designer so my take on this is an artist draws paints for himself to quench his creative thoughts ideas which makes him happy while a designer draws and designs for his customers and others to make them feel happy by buying their designer stuff so this thing you have to keep remember whether you want to be an artist uh, or whether you want to be a designer because if designer uh, comes a lot of challenge you have to go by your customer even if you like something and your customer doesn't like you have to scrap it so you have to be more open in this yeah next so these are a few of the uh, challenge no need to read out i'll read out for you and uh, what uh, as a designer people feel in the industry so some designers usually get too attached with their design which blindfolds them from taking other perspective the point that that i highlighted just now and uh, in pursuit of uh, creativity designers often forget the manufacturability the third challenge is in order to beautify the design look and feel the technical drawings are often ignored that you feel that okay i have done a beautiful rendering and it should go through and hit the market but what about the manufacturability boss you have to also consider that so this is a very primary challenge that many of uh, the designers face and uh, next is the less ex less exposure to the industry leads to creating impractical designs which are good to see and appreciate but not possible to manufacture guess work in giving tentative weights of gold cause of failure in construction and sample prototype making like if you have drawn drawn something and you are given like uh, ideally it should be uh, 10 grams uh, pendant but you have given 5 grams acha ye to itna chota lag raha so it will be like 5 grams so that's not practical so guess work you need to be more concrete and how it will come it will come by experience go to showrooms visit different kind of showrooms do a window shopping do a browsing and um, you know, ask for a pricing there is nothing nowadays with window shopping you can go to bargain to any showrooms and ask them that uh, so look at the design ask them that what is the weight and how much you are selling for so you will know that what what kind of design has what kind of estimated weight and once into, you are into the industry wherever company you join spend more time on the shop floor this will give you this will help you in to and um, Uh, the last point uh, was without sampling so you should do first the sampling then go to the market strategy and involving more complexity in the design reduces the chances of mass manufacturing and hence limited distribution sometimes in order to make beautiful designs we too we add too many elements into it we we'll add everything in the world in one design and that is the means uh, there is a very uh, famous saying na too many too many cooks spoil the uh, um, spoil the dish So same thing here. Yeah. So don't put everything into the same basket. Do experiment slightly. Put some creative thoughts here. Put some other in the next design. So there is always a scope for improvement. Yeah. Next. So we are running short of time. So now I will rush slightly. So and we are almost in the end only now. So important design details. The, so the solutions to all your problems is. in your design you should give top view side view all the views technical drawing should be there there should be an enlarged view there should be a 3d view there should be a product dimensions like length width and height next yeah this is a typical example of a perfect drawing which is manufacturing friendly which is customer friendly and easily sellable and manufacturable so if you see in this design on the left side the actual piece is there while on the right side and this is uh, this is what uh, our team at titan has done so if you see all the dimensions that are there like the weight of the ring it should be 21.5 mm the the length should be 21.3 mm the shank inner id should be 16 mm outer id should be 30 mm top view bottom view every detail is there so once this design comes nobody need to ask anyone 
a carrier will be self sufficient to do it by his own self even the cad designer won't ask you any question yeah so dome so we already discussed on that that dome whether you want concave or convex if it is concave how much height you want that needs to be done yeah yes so this is one example which i'll demonstrate so dome if you see there is one assume there is a one simple design on the right side you can see a 20 mm top view is there which is a pendant okay so this pendant has is full of diamonds but its cost its pricing its number of diamonds will depend on the side view only the same pendant the same top view can be made in 50000 with 100 diamonds can be made with 5 lakh with uh, 300 uh, diamonds so if you see the first uh, side view one number where the height is 8 mm so the dome is more in the second image it is 10 mm even more in the third image it is 5 mm so this i'll uh, leave to the question answer round so that you can tell me whether all three will have the same number of diamonds when we will set or all three will have different yeah next so here is one example if you see the top view of both the top image and the bottom image first top view from the top it looks like a round only perfect round there is no but from the side view it is dome it is a flat piece so why this parallel uh, drawings because in this in the top design we have used the total number of diamonds you will see uh, is quite less than what is used in the bottom design now go to the next yes so now you can see with a closer view see in the left which is a dome piece and the right which is a flat piece top view is exactly same so when you draw on the paper your only top view if you are drawing only top view there we will have a problem so in this design if my marketing person has asked me for uh, say 400 stones we will end up in giving 600 stones because the the dome piece is having 607 stones while the flat piece has only 420 stones so you can see a close to 200 diamonds plus which will account to more than 1 and 1/2 lakh if we are using vs diamond kind of quality so imagine you the product which you have thought that i will sell in 50000 uh, will add 50000 plus 2 lakh or so whatever is the price like if it is 2 lakh 2 lakh plus 2 lakh so that is why it is very crucial to do the technical drawing next so this is uh, uh, what i feel is the the graph so so you have to read it from bottom to top so bottom is your pds level where you are doing the designing so whenever you are designing give maximum input maximum references or maximum details the more detail you give in the beginning the easy the development process will be for you and in the end result will be much faster and uh, very beautiful as well so we need maximum inputs in the beginning at the pdi stage and in cad stage major major development happens where the inputs from the pdi is taken after that the ghat stage what i told you that uh, the gold pieces where we do the fine tuning and the final proto is the tip of the iceberg this is the ideal product development importance of the each uh, stage yeah so with that i have almost come to the end of my presentation so what are the expectations from budding designers so the industry when you enter the industry they will only say that let's design for business so now you are the youth and the future so many of you might be wondering that uh, i am very good in designing and i want designing only so what are the career prospects available in the market in the industry for you so it's not only designer like uh, there are many various roles Uh, once you complete your uh, courses into the industry open for creative minds like you you can be a designer you can be a coordinator you can be a pd coordinator you can be a design coordinator you can be a product analyst you can be a product developer you can be a cad designer you can be a coral designer you can be a merchandiser you can be a brand manager so many and etc there are many more roles so it's not only that once you if you have designed you will only be known as a designer it's up to you what role you are interested in for example i'll give you my uh, background i started my career apart from the fine arts i started my career as a designer so with uh, three companies uh, consecutively in the beginning of my uh, 
career i started with purely designer hardcore manual designer i was where i used to do beautiful rendering and things then slowly slowly uh, the technical aspects uh, started luring me and then i thought that why into not into technicals so then i got into technicals so then i uh, took the job of a coordinator then pd coordinator i took a job after that i i excelled in that field and then how i became the pd manager and now i am heading india's largest jewelry brand with uh, two of the best brands in india so that is why when the role is not limited and might be tomorrow if next time i address you i might be a marketing manager or or a brand manager so i don't know so various roles are open to all of you so i'll wish all of you all the best because you are in the right field and the jewelry market is never going to go down even in this pandemic a uh, jewelry is something in india which people even uh, if the chaos is also there people will rush to the stores buy something because it's uh, eventually an asset as well yeah so the, yeah next these are the images and references that we have done question answer yeah so uh, thank you everyone uh, now we will go ahead and take some time for the questions and answers just a reminder please be sure to type your question in the question box and i will answer it you so it was wonderful i think uh, i mean effortless the way you have uh, put your presentations it was so effortless i think you've already answered so many questions which were i think in my mind and a lot of other attendees minds too uh, but we'll still take up the questions which are there in the question answer box uh, so the first one says which software is used for rendering these designs yeah 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 hey, uh, thanks i can i can read i am also able to yeah. visit yeah yeah uh, answer them yeah so which software is used for rendering these designs so there are two kinds of rendering so one is a manual rendering what you do with a pencil faber castell or any other stedler any good uh, rendering and for, when it is coming to cad the software what i have what i have shown in my entire presentation we have used only one software that is matrix software and uh, matrix software has different uh, verticals like uh, cues where you can tune it to get the desired results so with practice you will come to you will i'm sure you will also be able to render but uh, to answer your question straight it is a matrix software the second uh, question from kavin kumar ilango sir your designs are simply awesome kindly mail your slides sir sure i'll uh, mail the deck to your listing um, vogue institute and from there um, we'll see that what what all we can share what is shareable what is not shareable but you can always go to the tanish website because maximum you will find it there you can browse it and you can go through the third question that has come out is sir what would be a perfect job initially i should opt for if i want to build my own brand if you want to build your own brand then uh, i'll recommend you join some uh, company which is not very big in size uh, because i'll tell you with my experience i have started with a not so big company and uh, slowly slowly and now i'm working for a giant in this industry so what there are pros and cons for both a small in a small setup you will learn everything you will start you should start from designing that will should be your core but with a small company you will uh, they will give you opportunity to do multitask they will pay you less but they they will want everything they will want you to follow up with the model maker to the production to the final so uh, to answer your question in one line you should join a small to medium size industry where you they will give you maximum exposure yeah next is from sangamesh uh gobi want uh, what is the difference between ordinary jewelry and hallmark jewelry so ordinary jewelry and hallmark jewelry is nothing the difference is only hallmark is a uh, organization supported by the government which ensures that your jewelry is uh, purity is pure there is nothing means any jewelry can be hallmarked it's a it's a third party it's a government agency and a third party agency where even if you are an independent designer you can get your jewelry certified through a, th a hallmarking company organization so hallmarking is basically best for a uh, end user because end users if you are buying from a very local shop you will not know whether your you are getting a the jewelry saying you 18 carat but it might be 16 carat also so eventually he will give you some discount but uh, you are losing uh, a lot of money in the carotage and for that is why whenever you are in doubt you should do, you even uh, you should go and buy from tanish because 
when you walk into tanish stores it's not because i work for this company but it's a worldwide known so tanish has a tata trust we manufacture only certified gems and jewelry so everything is uh, uh, properly whatever if we have told 18 karat it will be 100% 18 karat even in order to ensure that uh, it is uh, the authenticity of the product in all our 320 plus showrooms there is a device which is known as a karat meter it's it looks like a small printer where even if you walk into any store you can go go and put your jewelry inside it it will tell you the exact content of your jewelry how much copper is there how much gold is there how much silver is there all the components will be shown free of cost no need to pay even if you are going for browsing just go and try you will be sworn by this definitely so that 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 what i have to say for sanmanish yeah there's one more question the style of jewelry in demand keeps changing over the time how do you predict the change what does the future jewelry design choice looks like uh see i uh, couldn't uh, restore your name uh, you have rightly said because my presentation the theme of my presentation was not a design presentation it's more of a development and hence the end slide also shows product development so here i have tried to draw references through various open source images where i am trying to cover the technical aspects of it it's not a design where i have taken a, a reference from a trend search and same collection is continuing it's more of a industry perspective that when you are designing any sort of design whether it can be gothic era whether it could be minimalistic or whatever it is so what are the fine prints when you enter the industry what is required so definitely it's not a design presentation hence this uh, keeps on changing it's the development and manufacturing and industry's perspective i hope i have answered your question yeah next question is uh, do big brands have a safer space to produce i want great jewelry like chia pareli or sabisachi does it more viable for designers to collaborate for such jewelry lines safer space Uh, definitely with big brands if you go by a brand name uh, definitely it's uh, it's more reliable and as a jewelry designer yeah you can tie up because uh, that that will give you a bigger mileage in reaching your consumer because if you are a budding designer your people might not know you on day one might be you might have to um, sweat a lot for a couple of years to make your brand name so it's always safer to uh, get tie up up with a big brands yeah next question is i am actually doing bachelor's degree in costume design and fashion and this is a final year so can i get an opportunity to work with your company sir is yes, definitely you can get an opportunity but for that i am not the right person uh, you have to get in touch with our hr team uh, vogue you can get in touch with your uh, vogue institute and they will connect they will do the needful for you so if you give an opportunity for us what is the qualification you need from us sir we have uh, certain rules laid up for qualifications so like a person should be a diploma or degree holder from any of the reputed institute that's our criteria and rest is your talent and how you crack the interview does this apply for graphic designers as well graphic designers not necessarily actually means uh, uh, only the development will be there but uh, i i think this is not that many uh, the process will remain same but not the manufacturing where i'm talking about the jewelry and the setting and the other aspect it's because my slides were fully focusing on product development in the jewelry industry because i specialize in this industry and everything is pertaining to this industry while some of the slides is applicable to any of the accessory industry and fashion industry as well but graphic design i i doubt what are the factors by which costume of uh, cost of jewel can be reduced the yeah there are various factors through what the cost can be reduced like you can uh, if you are uh, manufacturing a 22 carat you go down to 14 carat you will reduce the weight uh, you will slash the rate directly by 30% so once uh, by reducing the carats second by reducing the diamond quality does this apply for graphic designer oh yeah that is i have already answered is there any relation between the 3d perspective and drawings yes definitely there is a relation because the more you give your uh, technical drawings and 3d drawings in the pdis the more accurate the cat designers will be there 
uh, to uh, make it live otherwise if you are giving only the top view he will not know and what you have imagined in your mind he might draw something else yeah can you suggest courses which students can pursue for jewelry designing i think your college uh, um, uh, faculty can answer this the best so is it necessary to do a master degree to be a jewelry designer nice presentation very informative thank you shivani thank you so much yeah it is not necessary to do a master degree uh, you can do any bachelor degree as well and even diploma is also good if you are good in your work there is no limitation there is no like this institute only or that course only if you are good in your work your portfolio speaks for yourself is there any books i might because questions uh, sorry guys because the questions are keep popping up and it is increasing uh, time and again so i might miss some so please pardon me and you can always mail your questions to um, your uh, the moderator and uh, through her i will take the answers i can email you the answers as well so now i'm going to take the last two questions please share your do we need to mention thank you for your good answer yeah i think we have uh, uh, covered almost can you suggest a course is it uh, is there any books that yeah is there any books that you recommend for budding designers to learn more about the technical aspect of jewelry designing yes there are certain books so you can browse through google uh, but i will also mail because i have a, a two three best recommendations so i will mail it to you so you can you can drop me your email id uh, to the moderator and i'll 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 share you the link for those books you can either buy it online or offline is 14 quality gold confidentially con confidently welcomed in the indian market yes and uh, we were the first few movers in this segment and that is how we launched mia so our mia brand if you browse it you can go to the net and uh, browse it mia is only 14 carat no other carat is is there so both that is how we distinguish both our brands in terms of design language and also in terms of the gold uh, tanishk is 18 carat for the studded and 22 carat for the plain while mia is only 14 carat studded and plain as well yes uh, shivrika said that can you share your email id so that we can connect with you through linkedin yes you can i'll just type my email id my email id is same as my name suggests uh, my name has uh, spelling is slightly different it's a n e e s h uh, one more h k u m a double r at gmail dot com so this mail you can send a very interesting question uh, mansi what did you show the company when you applied for your job so mansi uh, just to answer your question this is my actually seventh company in the span of 15 years but uh, also this is my uh, longest stint uh, because i'm still continuing with titan and hope to continue further uh, because before this i already had seven years of experience and tanish has the name Uh, suggest it's a market leader so uh, your talent will speak for itself so i didn't show them anything i just uh, went with my open mind and what i have i was very candid in my interview and uh, the rest is history thank you i think we have uh, closed all the answers yes yes sir thank you, thank you. <coughs> So that was wonderful, Anish. Uh, just uh, uh, some doubts from my side. So, sure. once you uh, are, you know, uh, launch some collection, and there's certain one or two style which doesn't sell at all, does it happen? And if it does, what do you do with it? So you are uh, asking about only certain styles or collection you are talking? No, certain styles. Of course, the whole collection won't stay. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that happens. That is a natural uh, phenomena which happens yeah. across across industry. if anyone has launched any collection uh, if uh, for example a collection has 100 designs it's not necessary that all 100 will go through 
so that is why uh, the best way is to get the expert panel and at titan also we have expert pa panel uh, who scrutinizes the entire collection and it's a, it's a, it's having a cross functional team from different like design marketing and all the, all the different uh, um, teams which come together and then we decide that which is the best okay. and uh, definitely in this uh, the marketing and sales team play a very bigger role because they are in daily touch with the consumers so they know what sells what doesn't sell so this is a possibility and this happens also yeah and uh, currently now that the market is hit consumer uh, finances are hit so how is the footfall these days uh, footfall uh, is uh, uh, slightly reduced definitely because people are not coming but uh, we have launched uh, very good initiatives of uh, online and where you can try it you can go to okay, okay. tanish tanish website and also in your mobile app if you okay. pose a selfie and you will select a design it will oh. automatically put into your ear through a okay. vr virtual reality so we are ai we have integrated so which helps the consumers to at the comfort of their home to uh, oh, okay. do the shopping so um, yeah. i'll recommend you also to go and try at least browse if you like go ahead and buy definitely definitely oh, that that was really good Anish, I have one question. In fashion industry, normally if the product does not sell in the particular season, next season mm -hmm. they give fifty percent discount. Do you have the same concept here? Uh, no, no, we don't have that uh, um, concept here at Tanish. We have annual uh, sale option, so we do launch uh, uh, annual sales, and there is a certain timing which uh, which is there. So it's not based on that what design is not selling that only will put on sale. there are various arithmetic calculations that the marketing and sales team do but definitely this is not the only criteria this is one of the criteria but we have a very complex matrix to work at it and okay. uh, i am not an expert to answer your question in this segment it is uh, pertaining to the marketing team yeah good it's a wonderful session anish uh, highly informative now i am planning to become a jewelry designer <laughs> <laughs> I'm a textile engineer. I'll become a jewelry designer. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Okay. It was it was indeed a wonderful session. Uh, some of the yeah, stackable ring that concept was really good. I really liked it, and uh, also that uh, the explanation that you give for the dome thing, you know, the uh, yeah, yeah. from above looks same, but then number of stones differs. So that was really great. I don't think we had such insight about jewelry till now. it was a completely new learning for us highly insightful uh, presentation was very crisp and effortless you were so thank you so much i think our attendees had lots to take away today uh, thanks for spending your time anish thank you so much for giving us so much to learn today yeah thank you shweta thanks for being such a wonderful uh, moderator and uh, you really made my journey easy by interacting in the beginning because otherwise i, I could have been un uncomfortable and thanks to vijay sir as well Uh, so um, and uh, the, the rest of the team because uh, when we interacted beforehand it uh, just uh, made the whole process very smooth so i felt like i'm i'm in my office and interacting with not unknown people but very known very close to heart people so thank you so much it was wonderful thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, hosting all of you and thank you thank you thank you so much and thank you so much for all our attendees for being with us throughout this journey i'll take some time to thank you all today because this is a tail ending session that we had today thank you so much uh, hope you all connect soon thank you so much yeah thank you so much wonderful day all of you thank you anish thank you